Oh, my dude's so much more powerful than your dude. Yeah, well, my dude totally just got the magic heart. Oh, 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 oh dude. And my dude just won the game. Nicely played, Lily. Ditto. Next time, though, my dude is totally getting to the magic bicycle level. Oh, that reminds me. My cousin Don is coming in for a dirt bike race, and I'm so making a pre-race dinner. Dirt biking? Awesome. Totally. I was thinking of, you know, making a pumpkin ravioli with cranberries and Whoa. maple. Oh, no. 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 What? Don is a total dude. He's a machine. Two words for you: steak and potatoes. Actually, that's three words. And my cousin Dawn's a girl. Oh! Girl or a guy? A champ dirt bike racer is totally high on the dude scale. Yeah, that's like dude with extra use. That's like dude. Well, uh, let's see how many dude foods we can come up with. Yeah, yeah. dude. 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 Yeah. Dude. Dude. Today on Taste Buds, foods for dudes. I'm putting a vegetarian twist on a dude favorite. The burger. This looks wicked awesome, dude. I'm going to an authentic steakhouse to meet with the meat. That is a lot of steak. And then back in the kitchen, we're putting a sweet twist on a deli favorite that all dudes will love. Chocolate salami. Are you in the mood? We've got foods for dudes. Taste Buds. We love to cook and we love to eat. We are the Taste Buds. Oh, dude! Dude. Dude? Dude. 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 Dude! I love speaking dude. Status update. Avery is looking for foods for dudes. Five bucks says Tyler comes up first. <laughs> Hey dudes, why the dude foods? Lily's cousin is a champion dirt biker and a total dude. She's coming to town for a dirt bike race and Lily's trying to figure out what kind of dinner she should make her. Wicked, I always wanted to do that. I know, it covers all the dude bases. Being outside, bikes. And dirt. When I get my trading wheels off, look out. Uh, forget I said that. My favorite dude food would have to be my grandma's shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie, dude. Yeah, each bite and I'm like, Dude, Grandma is a total dude. Where's Lily? She's learning how to make a fancy burger. Burgers? This dude loves burgers. <laughs> Later, dudes. Later. So, dude? Yeah. Burgers have been a popular dude-like food for a long time. They were first on the menu about 100 years ago and only cost a dime. A 10-cent burger these days would be the size of a dime, too. Talking about small burgers, I'm about to make some right now. Hi, I'm Lily. Hi, I'm Stuart. Stuart, my cousin loves burgers, but I want to make her one that's way up in the dude factor. Any suggestions? How about mini falafel burgers? Radical dude, but first... All right, so what's the first step? The first step is we're just going to take these chickpeas out of the water and we're going to put them into the sieve so we can strain them before we put them into the roboku. These are chickpeas that we've soaked overnight. We're just rehydrating them so they're going to make a really nice puree for us when we puree them. That's great. I think that's plenty right now. All right. Thank you. So what we do now is we put the lid onto the food processor and then we're going to turn that on so all of these dry chickpeas will now become a nice puree. Blenders can hurt. Get them grown up. Then what we do when you just started to puree it, just take a plastic spatula, and then we just need to knock down all of the sides. That gives us a really nice soft puree. Okay. Put the lid back on, and off we go again. We just stop it at that, make sure the blade is stopped, open her up, and there we have the puree. Ooh. Changes texture very quickly. If you wouldn't mind taking the spatula and then scraping all of the chickpeas into the metal bowl. All right, get all that. Out like that. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thanks. It's very sticky. <laughs> yes, it is. 
All right, that looks about good. That's great. Our next process for the recipe is that we're going to combine all of the ingredients into the puree chickpeas. All right. Okay. The first one here, that is some ground cumin. Kind of like a taco spice. Very similar, yeah. Very nice. Very Middle Easterly. Next, we're going to put in the lemon zest. That'll give it a nice, sharp, acidy flavor. This one is just a little bit of chili spice. That's going to give it just a little bit of heat. Perfect. Nice little kick. Some nice fresh garlic, finely chopped for a nice seasoning. Nice. Garlic. <laughs> you can't beat garlic. Next, we're going to get a really nice, sweetly smoked paprika. This will help for the depth of the flavor of the falafel. And the color, too. Absolutely. Very, very vibrant color. Isn't it? Next ingredient is some finely chopped parsley. Parsley. This is going to add flavor and color again. Next one, we have some finely chopped white onion. Onion is a total dude food. It's a very strong flavor as a falafel. All right. Next one, we've got some finely chopped cilantro. Ooh, cilantro. Love cilantro. Me too. <laughs> Next, we're going to put a little bit of flour in there. This is going to help combine all of the mixture so it sticks together. It's like a hair gel. It is. This will help keep your hair stood up too. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of baking powder. This is going to help make the mixture nice, light and fluffy when we cook it. Right. There we go. That's all of the ingredients. So if you'd like to get your hands in there now and just mush it all up, we're going to combine everything thoroughly. You can really smell the lemon and the garlic, can't you? Yes, the lemon really comes out. <laughs> all right, so this looks pretty well mixed. That's very well mixed. So our next step, what we're going to do is we're just going to make some little round burgers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on here so that it won't stick. And then what me and you are going to do is we're just going to get a little bit of the falafel mixture. So about that much? That's perfect and then start slowly rolling it into a ball on your hand like this. And when you get that shape on your palm, just slowly tap it down so you make a nice little round shape. And then we're going to pop it into the flour. And we're just going to roll them round so we get a nice little burger shape. Flip over the other side. Ooh. Make it round and then move it to the end of the tray. That does look like a burger patty. Isn't that great? Wow, you're fast. <laughs> Let's have a sloppy high five. High five. Okay, first thing what we do, Lily, we get a non-stick pan and we get a nice vegetable oil, it's a spray, we'll put a little bit of that in. Now I'm going to turn the gas on because what we need to do is make sure that this is nice and hot so when we put the falafels in they're not going to stick. Stoves are hot, get a grown up. So what we're going to do with a little spatula is very gently put the falafels into the pan. What happens if you're gentle with it but it still breaks? And that means there's a little bit too much moisture in your falafel mix. So what you can do is take all of it out, put it back in the bowl, add some more flour, remold them, and off you go again. Add some of the hair gel. Absolutely. And there we go. All six mini burgers in the pan. The first one that we put in now, you can see that that's starting to foam just slightly around there. So very gently, we're just going to flip it over. Just slowly getting there. We're getting a nice dark color. So I'm just going to tip this one over. Dude, these look good. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that one's perfect. So these are going to take about two or three minutes just to cook in the pan so we get that nice caramelization on them. These are so cute. <clears throat> I mean, these look wicked awesome, dude. <laughs> Let's dig in. The tahini sauce adds such a nice kick to the falafel burger. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's awesome, and it's the perfect snack size for after a day of dirt biking, too. <laughs> My cousin's gonna love this. Thanks, Stuart. My pleasure. Thank you. Mmm, <laughs> delicious bite-sized burgers. So what are you waiting for? Make your own mini falafel burgers. All the ingredients you need are right here. Status update. Lily is in mega love with mini burgers, dude. Mini bite-sized veggie burgers? They're so cute. 10 out of 10 on the dude scale. Steak is a word from Viking times meaning roast. The thick slices of beef, most often found here, a steakhouse. Howdy, dude. Howdy, Jasmine. Check this out. On summer vacation, I went with my family to a dude ranch. It was awesome. A dude ranch? Where dudes like us just Hang out? Nah, dude, it's where people go to ride horses and join nature. Did I mention I love horses? Sounds like hungry work. Sure was for this year, Junior Wrangler. Every night we had a different dinner, but my favorite was steak night. Hey, that's what I'm about to make. Really? Do me a favor and learn the doneness test. 
it's a really fun way to find out when a steak is cooked. Will do, dude. Stay cool. This might be my favorite field trip ever. Let's go. Come on, it's steak. Hi, I'm Avery. Hi, I'm Chef Sean. Welcome to Morton's. So if I'm looking for steak. Dude, we've got steak. <laughs> All right, let's go. Wow, you weren't kidding. That is a lot of steak. This is actually a good cross-section of, uh, of what it is we do here, and it gives you sort of an idea of, of the different cuts that we do have. And what kind of steaks are these? Right here we have uh, our 14-ounce tenderloin. What's the tenderloin? The tenderloin is actually a very unused muscle on the cattle, so it's very tender. And then we also have a bone-in tenderloin. Um, over here we have a, uh, our New York strip loin. Is it actually from New York? No, it's not from New York, but they call it a New York strip loin because uh, if you take a look at it, it's sort of the shape of the island of Manhattan. Oh, no way. That's it. Right here we have our, uh, our ribeye steak, and it's uh, the most marbled version of what we do here. So the marbling, what is that? The marbling is sort of the, it's the, uh, the internal fat that you can see, so you see the little white flecks. And what that does is it retains a lot of the flavor and it keeps it moist as you're cooking it. It's all the good flavor. Yeah, that's one of the key things you want to look for uh, when you're picking out steak. Is as much marbling as you possibly can, and a nice bright red color like all these have. So what kind of steak is this? And this right here is our bone-in ribeye steak. It's a massive slice of it. It is a huge, huge steak. And this right here is at our porterhouse. This is sort of the best of both worlds. This side here is the tenderloin we discussed over here. And this side here is the New York strip loin. So you buy one steak and you get two. Well, I'm ready to eat some steak. How about you? I'm totally ready to eat some steak. I'm going to pick out the porterhouse because it'll give you a good idea of the tenderness and the flavor side of what we do here. And I got to ask you, how do you want this thing cooked? Well, what are my choices? Well, we can go from the least cooked, which is like blue rare. Uh, we can go to rare. There's medium rare, uh, medium, medium well, and cooked all the way through is well done. I think I like uh, medium well, medium rare. Yeah, medium rare. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the Morton seasoning salt here. We're just going to sprinkle some on both sides. You really want to make sure fun. you get the flavor of the steak. Absolutely. All right, so let's throw this thing right on here. Wow, that is hot. That is very hot. Right now, we're running at about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit or just under 800 Celsius. Wow, my oven only goes to 500. Why does this one go so high? Well, what we want to do is create like a nice crust on the steak that keeps all those juices inside so we're not losing anything. And this does it faster than anything I can think of. How do you know when it's ready? How does the dentist test work? Um, if you just take your hand and just hold it palm up like that and just nice and relax, and if you just touch the pad of your thumb there, that's what a rare steak's gonna feel like. Okay. Then if you touch your index finger, that's what a medium rare steak's gonna feel like. It's a little bit harder. Touch your middle finger, and that's what a medium steak's gonna feel like. As you keep going along, that's medium well, and that's about what well done feels like. So you can feel it getting a little, a little harder and there's yeah, a little less resistance. Harder every time. Yeah. I think the steak's ready. All right, let's take this bad boy off here. Right down there. Oh, it's good. There you go, ready to go. I'll tell you what, let's see how much you learn. I'm gonna get you to test to see if it's medium rare. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's medium rare. Well, there you go. It smells great. All right. Whoa there, dude, it's coming. Hey, dudes, what are you doing? We're playing spacewalk. Oh, dude. Did you know that steak is one of the top five foods astronauts request on missions? It's because it's so naturally flavorful. That makes steak one of the most popular foods in the universe. Cool. Hey, Avery, I bet you I still know more about steak than you do. <laughs> not after being at this steakhouse. We'll see about that. Later, dude. All right, Avery, let's get down to business over here. I can't wait to try this. And let's cut into this thing and see what we got. All right. Wow, that looks perfect. There you go, man. It's a nice warm red center. That's what we're looking for. There we go. Because it's the best of both worlds, I'm going to give you a piece of the other side. A little bit of the tenderloin. That's it. All right, you can help yourself with some mashed potatoes there and some of the grilled asparagus. Beautiful. All right, man, dig in. All right. Mmm. That is grilled to perfection, my friend. So what do you think? I honestly did not think the taste could live up to the smell, but it did. 
Thanks, Chef Sean, for showing me the thrill of the grill. No problem, Avery. Come back anytime you want, man. That steak was amazing. <laughs> Happy now, dude? Hey, Penny. Hey, what's up, dude? I just ate the best steak ever. I saw your update, and my cousin Bodie is a total surfer dude in California. I asked him what dude food is his favorite. What did he say? Tuna salad tacos. Well, actually, he said, dude, tuna salad tacos get me totally stoked to ride the barrel. Cool, man. Hang 10 and stay radical, dude. Right back at you, dude. Yeah, whatever. I'm telling you, dude, I know way more about steak than you. You're being totally undudely. I have the ultimate steak knowledge. Oh, yeah? Name five kinds of steak. It's a dude off. New York, T Bone, Porterhouse, Filet Mignon, Top Butt. Did I say five kinds of steak? I meant name ten kinds of steak. Hanger steak, skirt steak, flat iron, flank steak, ribeye. Dude, that was awesome. Well, I hate to break up this important debate, but Lily, have you thought about what you're gonna make Don for dinner? Yeah, I'm gonna make a little bit of steak, some potatoes, lots of veggies, mm. and some falafel for after the race. But my favorite is dessert. All together now, chocolate salami! Dude. Dude. Uh, dude. All right, this bad boy is called a double boiler. Double boilers are double hot. Get a grown up. What does that do? You see how there's steam rising? But when I put this bowl on top, the steam is gonna make sure that anything we put into this bowl melts, like the chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate. All right, why don't you guys start breaking up the chocolate and then putting it inside the bowl? Okay, I'll break up the dark chocolate. I'll break up the milk chocolate. And the only difference between the two is one has more cocoa than the other one. Right. See how it starts to melt right when you throw it in? Whoa, look at it melt, dudes. That's awesome. Mm. All right, guys, you know what's gonna melt even faster than the chocolate? What? Butter. Let's throw it in there. All right. One cube. Make it really creamy. Two cubes. Two cubes. And I'll add some cinnamon. Oh, yeah. Spice it up a bit. Yeah, just grate it right into the bowl. Mmm. All right, that's really mixing well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, which is gonna bring out the flavor of the chocolate. Ooh, and in it goes. Now, we don't have any pepper, but you know, some chocolate bars have pepper flakes or actually like coarse ground pepper in it. To make it hot? Yeah, just to give it a bit of a spice. It brings out the cocoa. All right, why don't you add some of the vanilla? That's a gonna add bit. even some more flavor to it. You can't have chocolate without vanilla. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to make it a little bit stickier, and it's gonna add some sweetness to it, too. Ooh. All right. Now, chocolate doesn't really like hot temperatures, and that's why I have the element set on low. And I gotta keep on stirring, because I don't want the chocolate to scorch. You also gotta be really careful that no water gets into the mix, or else you're gonna have a whole bunch of chocolate clumps. What's next, Avery? Next, we're gonna add some ladyfinger cookies. That must be them. We're gonna crush them up and we can just use our hands. Work those fingers on those fingers. <laughs> this is gonna add texture to the salami. Let's just add that in. No, oh, that's perfect. Ooh, that's really well mixed. All right, I'll keep on sticking with the mixing machine here. I'll put some of these cherries in. Those are gonna be really chewy. Yeah, add a little bit of sweetness and tartness. And you could probably use different things too if you don't like cherries, like raisins or cranberries. Sure. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this rice cereal. Sprinkle it in like so. Make it nice and crunchy. Yeah, it's gonna be crunchy. It's almost gonna be like it's like the flour in a cake mixture. Last but not least, let's add some of these almonds that I've been toasting in this pan. Some people are allergic to nuts. Get a grown-up. That's gonna be great for the crunch. Okay, guys. I think it's time to chill. All right. This is how we're gonna turn our chocolate mix into chocolate salamis. We're gonna take a bit of the mix, throw it on this wax paper. Here's a little for you. All right. And here's a little for you. It's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> and then bring the paper up and you just kind of want to mold it, right? To the very end. And along the way, you guys are going to be making sure it's like a nice little solid, a little mass of chocolate. So I don't have to press too hard, right? No. That's awesome. All right, so while you guys are doing that, I'm just going to go clean up this bowl. Okay. Whoa. 
feels really cool. Like you can feel all the rice mm. cereal. <laughs> Hey. Doing a good job cleaning that bowl. Someone has to do it. <laughs> All right. Now, take the saran wrap, put it underneath, and then basically you want to roll the whole thing in the saran wrap. So like what were you doing with the parchment paper? Yeah. All right, now twist the ends. Awesome. And then it's time to pop these into the fridge so we can cool them down and make them solid. Nice awesome. job. Perfect. I'll head to the fridge. I'm going to go notify the taste buddies. They're going to love this. All right, then. Let's see how you guys did. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Nice work. Whoa. Woo. Chocolate All right. Solidified. That looks awesome. It does look like salami. Dessert salami. There you go. Thank you. Nice for you. That is beautiful. There you go. One for me. All right. And I made some cream yogurt here that I thought would be really delicious with the fresh raspberries. All you have to do is drain the yogurt and then throw in some honey and vanilla, and that's it. Gnarly dudes. My cousin taught me that. Dudes, I would drive bike 10 miles for those. No training wheels. The perfect dessert for the Dude Ranch Partners. All right, let's try it. <laughs> this makes my top five list for sure. It was so fun to make, and it's full of surprises. And the yogurt cream and the fresh raspberry totally made this a dude dessert. The different textures in every bite, and the cherries are nice and chewy. Billy, your cousin is gonna love this. Dude. 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 Dude! I know it sounds weird, but chocolate salami is something you have to try. Go make one now. All the ingredients you need are right here. Status update. The taste buds are totally clued into Foods for Dudes. Dudes, chocolate salami, mass dessert, partners. You mean dude-zert? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>